We are honored and delighted that Anat recently joined the board of UN Watch and that she took the time and made the effort to be with us here today. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for the honor of uh, being with UN Watch and especially in this panel to be with such impressive and courageous warriors, so thank you. The root cause of the conflict, the root cause of the conflict has only ever been one, and that is the complete denial and rejection of the universal right of the Jewish people to self-determination in their ancestral homeland. There has never been any other cause for the conflict. And because this has been the cause of the conflict, it has determined everything at every point. Um, it meant that there was Arab opposition to Jewish immigration to the embryonic state of Israel, closing the gates to the Jewish people at their most desperate hour. That is before there is any occupation or settlements. It means that the war that was waged in 1948 was a total war against the establishment of a sovereign state for the Jewish uh, people in any borders whatsoever. It means that no peace was made with that state once it was established in the war. It means that total war continued later. It means that in 1967, when the total war continued, even then there was refusal to make peace with the Jewish state. Therefore, anyone who claims that Israel's military control of the West Bank and Gaza is the cause of the conflict either doesn't know history, doesn't know how to count. Israel's military control of the West Bank is an outcome, is a symptom. An outcome cannot be the cause. And the fact that despite multiple efforts, Israel could not end its military control because at every juncture, when the Palestinians faced a choice, they could have a state for themselves, a fully sovereign Arab Palestinian state in the West Bank and Gaza with no settlements, ending the occupation, capital in East Jerusalem, whenever they faced a choice that they could have that state. But the price of that state was that the Jewish people will have that state on the other part of the land, at least to date. They have decided that this is too high a price to pay. This is why Israel's military control of the West Bank remains because whenever Israel seeks to end it in an agreement or otherwise, another clock is brought to bear. The Palestinian Arab clock that says Israel is a temporary foreign presence in this land and we only have to be patient uh, and they will ultimately disappear. Now, this complete rejection was backed for many decades by the Soviet Union, by the Islamic world, and through that was brought into the United Nations beginning especially in the 1970s. A lot of the traditional Soviet and European animosity was actually outsourced to the Islamic and Arab world for the purpose of ensuring that the Jewish state will not enjoy a single day of peace and a single day of legitimacy. But the Soviet Union is gone. The Arab world is beginning to change its attitude. There is no single better word than Abraham to flip the traditional attitude of the Arab and Islamic world towards the Jewish state. If the traditional view has been that Israel is a foreign implant in the region, and in order to convey that it was foreign, you say that it is uh, a settler, white, colonialist uh, entity, this is how you say it's foreign, and if it's foreign, it means it's temporary, because if anything is foreign, it has to be pushed out and ultimately will not last. 
This is the traditional view in the Arab and Islamic world, and this is the reason that no compromise is made with Israel. But then, under the Abraham Accords, this is flipped, the word Abraham. There's no better way to flip the narrative than to say, you are not foreign, white, settler, colonial uh, implant in the region. You're Abraham. You're kin. You belong here, and we recognize you as a people with a history and a culture in this region, and we embrace you by virtue of belonging in. So the Soviet Union is gone. Some in the Arab world are no longer interested in committing their resources to fighting the Jewish state. So as someone half-jokingly commented, uh, when Europe realized that it could no longer outsource its anti-Semitism to the Arab and Islamic world, it's now bringing production back home. And this is what we're saying right now. We see this linguistic change where it was once recognized that the conflict is the Arab-Israeli conflict. There is the numerical dominance of the Arab and Islamic world against the Jewish state, and it's a total war against the Jewish state. And then it became the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, inverting the conflict, making Israel the Goliath and the Palestinians uh, the David. But it was still a conflict, somehow saying that both sides have legitimate grievances. And then the Israeli-Palestinian conflict only became about the occupation, turning the Palestinians into victims, into passive elements in this element who have basically no agenda. But the problem with occupation is that it's still legal. An occupation is a legal way of governing a territory acquired in war until the status of that territory is resolved in peace. So now we move from occupation to apartheid, which brings us full circle to the beginning, because apartheid means that a Jewish state in any borders whatsoever is illegitimate. And that was the beginning of the conflict to begin with, that a Jewish state in any borders is illegitimate and therefore total and complete war against it is the proper way to act. Now, why apartheid all of a sudden now? We look at this transition, we look at the West bringing production back home, uh, creating the idea that its Jewish state is illegitimate. Has anything changed on the ground? Absolutely nothing. If anything, things have changed for the better. But all of a sudden, you have several organizations all saying the same things. If you try to ask yourselves, oh, what is the objective reason, you will not find an objective reason. The only way to understand it is to understand that the human rights regime, as much as it has noble ideals, it has also established itself as a modern secular church with some of the beautiful ideals but also with the same sinister notion that the Jews are always to blame. And the human rights is now the secular church of many, and they are telling them as the secular church, those are the people that are always at sin. They have a perpetual sin. This is why the current commission of inquiry is perpetual, because the Jewish state is always a sin. It does not matter what it did yesterday or today or tomorrow. This is a sin and it, through that, the human rights worlds elevate itself once more to being, to having the mantle of the secular church. It is by now a theological obsession with the Jews and the Jewish state which is why we are participating in the equivalent of the medieval debates, when the Jews had to debate against Christianity, and when they won the debate, they were massacred, and when they lost the debate, 
they were massacred. And this is but a modern uh, reiteration of these medieval debates with the happy change that we can now protect ourselves. But to end on an optimistic note, because so much of this is perennial, about a few years ago, there was uh, an interview in a documentary where, with someone who was still alive of the perpetrators of the Munich massacre, the Palestinian uh, kidnapping, torture, and attack of Israeli athletes in the 1972 Munich Olympics, a high point in the moment of putting the Palestinian so-called cause on the international stage. And the perpetrator was very much proud of it. He said, this has been our greatest achievement. Beginning at that moment, we have placed the Palestinian cause on the international stage. And I thought to myself, very well, a great achievement in your world. And what sense? What have you achieved since? And I think this goes to the core issue. As long as the Palestinian cause remains as a top priority, the non-existence of the Jewish state, it will continue to fail because this is a destructive cause and this is a cause that brings nothing good to the world. The day that the Palestinians will finally adopt a constructive cause a cause that is to build a Palestinian state next to Israel rather than instead of Israel, that is the day that they will both have their state and that we will all have peace. But to get to that point, they have to extract themselves from being the servants of the ancient hatred of so much in Europe against the idea of the Jews being sovereign equal, and masters of their fate. Thank you. Thank you, Einat, for your important words and helping us understand what's uh, going on uh, here at the United Nations um, and really in the human rights world and I would say here in Europe.